So David, yes. uh, David Bichon, thank you for inviting us to your cafe. Um, I'm really interested about your book, Chopped and Served. Mm -hmm. Why did you write the book? Oh, there's many reasons why, but uh, one of the prime reasons is that too many people dying around me and I was getting scared of dying, mm -hmm. but it could happen to me tomorrow. And I thought I had a story to tell and I wanted to share it to my kids. So yeah. if something was going to happen to me, they would know who their dad was or what I've done and what I achieved and the high and lows of my life. So that was the primary reason why. Mm. And what did you discover in the process of writing your story? Uh, I discovered that uh, I went through a lot, <laughs> yeah. personally I felt. Um, I discovered that uh, my kids, um, when I told them about the book, were very receptive and they had an emotional con connection, I guess, to the book, but they realized what their dad did and they were embracing and I was explaining that, you know, people are going to talk about this book and they're going to be prepared what's happened to me and also I explained to them some of the things in the book like why you don't do sleepover because I had a bad experience doing sleepovers and, mm. and they understood suddenly why all these mm. little parameters and why they're brushing their teeth five times a day yeah. <laughs> because I never brush my teeth, like little things like that I felt, yeah. Yeah. but it was for them to yeah. take. You, in your book, you talk about um, quite significant events in your life yep. that, as you said, were quite negative mm -hmm. and, and had a profound effect. Mm -hmm. um, you also talk about then how you move past those negative uh, impacts and were able to turn your life around. Yep. What was the... Deciding factor? Yeah. Um, I, I don't know if it's luck, or mm -hmm. I don't know if it's how you wire in your head, but suddenly you can make a decision to know within yourself that what's right or wrong. Mm. So I could have gone doing the drugs, and yeah. somehow I knew that if I was going to go on the left doing the drugs, I'd be gone. Mm -hmm. And something might say, don't go there. Yeah. And I was able to drive myself and go to the right and mm -hmm. go to work. I think work was a big factor for me is to put all my energy to work, put all my issues under the carpet and just work. Eventually we'll catch up with you later on, but mm -hmm. that was the best thing I've done at the time to escape drugs or abuse or be on the street or whatever. You get to a point in your life where you realise that it's going to start affecting your family and your relationships if you don't do something about it. Yes. What did you do? Uh, very good question, huh, Patricia. Mm. <laughs> you prepare yourself. <laughs> <laughs> very good question. Well, I think that uh, what happened is when my daughter was born, yeah. then everything came back to the surface. Yeah. And like a tsunami. Yeah. Wow, no one could touch her. No one could uh, go to see her when she was sleeping. Um, she had to go into a routine. Uh, it was no negotiable. So I was uh, mm. like a dictator with my daughter when she's mm. born. And then that's where I realized that I did need some serious help, otherwise I would jeopardize her life as well. Yeah. So I'm glad that the people around me, my wife, my mother-in-law, that say, young man, you need some help here. Yeah. And uh, so I started seeking help. Yeah. Obviously, you know, you don't see the right person straight away. So it was a yeah. long process yeah. to see the right person until uh, the last couple of years where I saw someone that was, I guess, life changing in terms of um, death, in terms of moving forward, in terms of dealing with what happened and not putting it under the carpet. Mm. Mm. So, so seeking someone high level probably. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that, that's ha had an, an incredible then turnaround for you in your life and mm. your relationships. And I know you've got a wonderful relationships with your, w relationship with your children and your wife. Mm -hmm. So this takes us then to why interrelate. Um, interrelate. First, uh, I, was, uh, I was exposed to interrelate with their work, what they do, mm. and I thought it would be a good uh, fit mm. uh, for, uh, for what I've done and what I went through. Mm. They got so many platforms that they can help so many people at so many levels in terms of that is trauma, abuse, any kind of uh, thing that kids or younger kids go through that I think mm. interrelate can help. Mm. And the, my book, I think, fit in all this little platform I guess. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so in, in a way um, your book is about inspiring others to not be afraid to tell their story? Yes, definitely, but you've got to be prepared to tell your story, you've got to be yeah. prepared uh, to open yourself to everyone, so yeah. that's what I've done. Um, 
I think the therapy maybe start now, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because um, you know you you sort of relieve what you went through. Yeah. But uh, I'm so grateful that I've done it because I feel like every morning now I get up, I open my eyes, and I'm blessed to be alive. I'm blessed that I can tell my kids 200 times a day I love them, which I didn't get that when I was little, and maybe it doesn't mean that my parents didn't love me, yeah. just they didn't know how to say it because yeah. no one said to them. Yes. And I'm blessed to have an amazing wife, an amazing business, but also, it sounds very cliche, but to be able to give it back, that's what I do. Yeah. I want to give it back because I'm so lucky, so lucky to be in Australia, so lucky that I made a success of myself in terms of family, not necessarily financially, but I'm happy. I'm in a very good place. David, thank you for your story thank and you. for giving it back. Pleasure. Thank, thank you. you.